wonder what makes the greats great what makes the successful successful what makes the brilliant brilliant our tuesday meetups with the celebrities of pharma industry and science are your one stop shop to all these answers and more join us for pies of life an initiative of the biopatrika industry mentorship program where we bring your dream mentors to you so uh, samita welcome to this uh, session that we have um, on these uh, tuesday nights uh, the, the, as as you heard some of them most of us are in the biotechnology field we are so sort of scientists work in industry and in far in academia uh, pursuing phd's having phd's you know in, so we talk about scientific aspects of our lives and and things right um in this conversation that we have with um, with that we bring to this forum we try to understand um, journeys of what people have done in their lives uh, and and to learn from the experiences that you might have had so that we can all apply um, it on the on the kind of decisions that we all have to make right um so using using your enormous experience and expertise in the uh, in the field of art and and you know intellectual art uh, meaning in intellectual conversations on art which we've had so many of uh, especially from the bengal school of art and shanti niketan um you can use that as a forum but the underlying theme is maybe to understand your life journey a little bit and the decisions that you've made so with that as an introduction i uh, hand it over to you for maybe a 20 minute session and then we'll open it up for question and answers thank you thank you dr narain thank you i mean thank you for inviting me for this lovely evening and it's interesting people always uh, that art and science meeting art and science is always interesting session actually because 2003 or 4 i think uh, we had a fascinating workshop uh, with the government of india science and technology that's the year it was the scientific mapping of uh, indian geography so i mean that uh, workshop we had lot of these scientists and science journalists there so it was very good actually how art and science they are trying to put together of course there are many logics and we also know how tagore and einstein they had a interesting conversation and correspondence that is also very important well uh, today maybe i will share some slides very simple the way any child starts their life and when they are child at least in uh, my childhood days uh, i born in 1968 that time the, in middle class bengali family in jamshedpur there is not much term exist called art you know or, or some professional artist or something like that so how a child grow actually what they think and how they engage with some uh, different form than which uh, not exist in the home you know not usually they see the parents or some relatives uh, normally the newspaper come or some magazine that sort of a thing but how the art world appear into that that's very strange actually because i, I never thought all this thing i mean i uh, realized maybe uh, after many years so i will start from that image where i was reacting and my journey was starting as uh, dr narin has mentioned that uh, of course uh, intellectual discussion uh, that's a different thing and i don't believe actually uh, intellectualism you know it's very tough to say easy thing um, or uh, a kind of a complicated thing uh, in a very linear way it's very difficult actually it's very difficult i mean sometimes we make things complicated that people don't understand so it is our responsibility artist responsibility i mean many people say ki we don't understand contemporary art we don't understand modern art we understand handicraft we understand traditional art so that is also kind of a important point made me think ki why this gap is happening because it is our responsibility the famous historian who is no more now dr shabashachi batacharya who was a vc of jnu and also in uh, shantiniketan he told me kishamit if you can't convince people what you are doing what you are writing then 
the problem starts with you. Problem lies with you. It is not others' problem. So, should we start the slide? And yes, please, please okay. go ahead. I, I'll let you start. If... Okay. Um, uh, so, now I born and brought up in Jamshedpur. It's an industrial city. And uh, in my family, there is no artist, there is no art exists actually. Everybody is kind of a technical or non technical person, something like that. So, there is no art exist, but somehow I got into the local art classes and I have joined there. So the basic interest started from the geometry and organic. That's the composition I got. The geometry is the township layout, the buildings, flats, and the organic is the nature because Jamshedpur has a beautiful landscape and nature. So that's the reason I'm showing these dry leaves and these flats where the townships are and some trees and all. So that's the whole journey started from this point. I was attracted to the nature at the same time, some of these geometrical elements of the buildings. Probably that is the initial stage to get interest with the architectural motives, which I'm later on interested. So this is something very strange. Every family, middle class or rich or whoever, they have this kind of god and goddesses. And of course, in Bengali family, they have certain god and goddesses. And the Bengali, they do, I mean, of course, South Indian also do, and many other also do this Ranguli on the floor. So this is a kind of a very primary introduction for me to look at art. Of course, there is no art word exist, but this is something different beyond of the human beings which I'm seeing in front of me. The god and goddesses, I wonder with the forms and the Ranguli, that's the decorative motifs. So these two elements started kind of a creating kind of a spark within me. And then, of course, I started making some drawings of these god and goddesses. And also I was interested with this scientific drawing without any understanding, because let's say that time I was studying uh, class four or five. So that was the time I was making some kind of a drawing like gems were drawing or some other drawing uh, experimentation, something like that. There is no knowledge what it is exactly, uh, what is the image, what it says, nothing. I just got attracted with the geometric shapes and I started copying it. So that's the two basic things started working with me. One side, the drawing of the God and Goddesses. And the second is the geometric drawing of the machines or this uh, science experiments. And then, of course, when I joined in art college, I saw the art classes, local art classes, I started doing this watercolor. That's the typical watercolor whenever you go to the art classes or general art college, they teach something like this. This is a very, very uh, typical British style when British was in India. They taught us this kind of a style. It's a very uh, stipulated technique. One, anybody can do it if they learn. And of course, this is the part of the uh, township where always I used to go for sketches and watercolors and all. You can see the rocky surface, this uh, foliage, the trees and everything. So that's how the whole combination started when I joined in the art classes. Again, there's not much knowledge about art. It's just something I'm really enjoying. That's how it started. Hmm. And that, that was the time even I don't know there is art college exists, one can go to art college, they can have a degree or diploma, they can get a job, nothing, I don't have any clue. Hmm. The one senior person who was studying in Baroda from Jamshedpur, he came at home and he saw and he said, oh, you must go to art college. I said, what is that? They said, they give degree, you can do bachelor and master, whatever, and you can get a job. I said, yeah, I can get a job. He said, yes, you can get a job. Because uh, my three generations, they are all with the Tatas. You know, half of my family, they live in Jamshedpur and half they live in Calcutta. So, that was a kind of a very, very uh, close engagement uh, with the whole uh, the relation. You know? My father, my father's uh, maternal uncle, the cousins, my elder brother, everyone is three generations, they're working with Tatas. So there is no place for art in that. Though 
the data at that time, Dushi Modi was the chairman managing director of the data still, he was very much encouraging for the art and many other activities. So one point even my father told me if today there is some art famous artist, Mr. Hussein is coming in Michael John Auditorium. So why don't you go and have a look what he's doing? <laughs> so that's the first time he told me actually. Before that, there's nobody, I mean, told me about all these activities, this art class, going and coming back, doing my studies, that's all. So anyhow, so the, uh, after Jamshedpur episode, after my high school and all the intermediate, uh, I joined Calcutta Government Art College. So this is the watercolor I have done in uh, this planet while I was studying in Calcutta Government Art College. Again, you can see the previous style uh, this uh, watercolor and that watercolor kind of a closed style because it's a very typical British academic style as I mentioned you. And I did some kind of architectural abstraction looking at some broken houses or something like that. So that's probably my early abstraction. You know, it's a very early. Mm -hmm. Let's say this is something happened during 1988-89. That was the time. And this is the hostel. This is no more now. This was the art college hostel. It's a very strange O-shaped building. You have only one cut, white cut, where you can see the sky. The rest, nowhere you could see the nature or sky. It's a very typical uh, old Calcutta Badabajar style building. So we were staying there, that's the hostel. So this is a kind of engagement, primary engagement uh, of architecture, space, and uh, the motifs, abstraction, all sort of thing. Of course, the word I'm saying today very clearly, but those days it was not clear. It is just a big uh, uh, affinity with that. Okay, I like this. Oh, I love this. It's like that. Nothing beyond of it, actually. Mm. Then some point I didn't like art college education. And uh, I thought, no, this, this is not a right place for me. Again, I was not sure why I didn't like then one of my friends told me, why don't you look at Shantini Ketan? Let's go one day to Shantini Ketan and maybe you will like it. And you can join there actually if you get an admission. I said, okay, let's go. So one day after a year, I mean, we went to Shantini Ketan and somehow I liked the place and I got admission over there. And definitely I got attracted to the nature first. These erosive land I've never seen before coming to Shantini Ketan. This is a very, very uh, strange Jerusalem land that one can see in the uh, Birbhum district in West Bengal, where Shantini Ketan is. Also, I was very much attracted with this uh, body structure while they are making it or before it gets, uh, after the immersion when the straw structure just left outside but not in between stage when the god appears with a huge grandeur. I don't know, it's very strange. So this is how I met this kind of drawing pastels. And again, some of these uh, village boy, they made uh, very strange uh, houses and something like that for their play and fun. So that sort of a thing, I started uh, taking photographs and I made a collage. So it's all sort of thing mixed together while I was staying in Shantaniketan because I was using the whole time. But the Shantaniketan has a very good thing that if you want to use the time, there is a time. Because you don't have to go anywhere. You are just staying in a hostel where within a campus. Uh, you know, I mean, those days even uh, I never used any leather shoes even. So just uh, sleeper was enough because mm -hmm. you don't need that actually. But all these elements started joining with me. But again, I was not very happy. What is the meaning of study? What is the meaning of art? Why I should uh, do it? And why I don't do other things? All those issues started appearing. And the questions are throwing to my teachers. Okay, okay, what's wrong with me? Why I don't like my own work even? I like some of these artists' work. Let's say, you know, Barry or some other. But I don't like my work. Why? Of course, the teachers have started saying different things and those are not my right age to understand. And then of course, the other thing, I was very much fascinated again with this erosive plant, which is not much available now. It's all uh, gone with the property development and all. And this is something I was very much interested. This is the Tagus residence. It's one of his house. 
and this is the staircases, the detail of the staircases. And one day I was sitting in front of this house under a tree and I was thinking, wow, this looks like this elusive land, the steps, you know, different steps coming out. It's, it has a very interesting resemblance. So I started taking photographs. So the 1990-91 photography has joined with my art practice, Simon Tanasco. And very seriously, Shantani Ketan don't teach any photography separately, but I, I was doing my own way and started taking the photograph of landscape and especially the architecture and detail of the architecture. Again, I don't have any clue why I'm photographing it, but of course it's my love. And uh, later on, when the time came to do a dissertation during my masters, I thought, let me work on these because this is something which I'm always fascinated. After staying in Jamshedpur, not much. I was engaged with Kakata, but this is something I'm very much engaged. Even if I'm away from Shantanika, then I wanted to come back during the vacation when I was staying in Austin. So I got permission to do a dissertation on architecture of Shantanika. Of course, 2013, these subjects, that's the primary stage I did with the dissertation paper. Of course, the architecture is photography, the layerings, the abstraction, collage, everything was involved with it. And uh, as Dr. Narin mentioned about the intellectual area, of course, there is a little interesting point on this architecture. Tagore made this architecture not just a concrete structure. He was kind of a dreaming to incorporate or synchronize this concrete with the nature. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting point embedded in my mind. Of course, it is all written in later in his publications and all. So I've studied that and I got it. And then I was curious how to bring back all those into the art practice. Because theory, the research, that's one area. Of course, when artists work with the hand, they don't remember. Mostly they don't remember all these things. So this is again glance of Shantanagetan classes under the tree. Perhaps this is the early concept of architecture, having glass under a tree. Because he wants to do something like Tapovan, the ancient uh, study culture, but not like a Tapovan. Of course, I'm not going for the Bengal school movement, the revivalistic area, this and that. No, I'm not going just for that. One, again, one, one quick comment. Can you just go to the previous slide? I just saw a name. Which one? Oh, Dr. Chandrima Shaha. Oh, she she yes. is she, she's the she's the president of Indian National Academy of Sciences, right? Same same yes. person. Yes, uh, I know. Okay, okay. Yes. Though her father was the photographer, actually, Shambhu Shaha. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, so Chandrimadi was very kind and allowed me to use photograph. And I was very close to the family, actually. Her mother was very close to me. Her mother, yeah. her mother was even an artist, actually. Yeah, for, for, for all of us on the on the call, she is yeah. a very seminal person in uh, in the field of biotechnology in India. She's done phenomenal work. <laughs> Maybe you can look, up, look her up. Uh, she's also on Wikipedia. Uh, wow. <laughs> so that's quite fascinating. Yeah, yeah that's Chandriva Shah. <laughs> so, yeah, certain fragments, again, I'm showing where I got sparked and I got uh, interest to look things back again because in my art practice always I have interest to look back even if I have done something in childhood still I have interest to look back. So this image stuck in my mind when I saw first time many years back here three Tego is Avanindranath, Gavanindranath and Shomarindranath. They're all sleepy mood in Jorashako house in Calcutta. Uh, this is the famous, uh, the Boston Brahmin, Ananda Kentis Kumaraswamy, uh, the Sri Lankan scholar. Mm. And Kumaraswamy is uh, discussing and insisting Nandalal Bosch to make uh, some illustrated catalog of the Tagore collection. That's the background story of this tribe. Amazing. So in those days, there was no digital archive, no hard copy, soft copy concept like that. So it's just a, a drawing sheet. Uh, making the layouts of drawing or some small layouts of the picture, then writing the description. That's how the catalog built up actually. 
you can see one after another, they're building up these cattle of these booklets and all. So I was wondering, will there was important movement, and this is something one has to see that how they were very curious to document the whole thing. Even in science, you have an idea how to document that. You do the documentation. Even in operation in medical science, they do all the video recording and documentation. So this is one of the uh, interesting and primary source of those days, the documenting art of the evidences and archival materials, which was lying in the Tagore houses. Mm. But you see, the owner of this material, they are all in a sleepy mode. <laughs> <laughs> Probably that's the bad thing calling. Anyhow. There's a hookah over there, uh, Mr. Das. Yes, yes. yes that's, that's why a, probably opium yeah, or something. Hookah. Yeah, that's the hookah because uh, the government Indranath was very much uh, interested to smoke hookah. So this is how he was doing. And Avun Indranath was sleepy mood, and Shamar Thakur was always uh, with the book, so he was reading book. So that's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't care about this documentation. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, uh, the last uh, years in Shantiniketan, in my art, as I mentioned, there is some abstraction, there is some photography, there is some collage, uh, trying to locate myself where I, I am. Of course, the strange uh, sequence through the photographic images, because it was a day uh, of a film and a lot of camera, you can't do much with the digital, though there was no digital technology those days. I'm talking about 94, 95, 96, during my end of bachelor's and master's. So all these curiosities are together. I'm carrying all the curiosities during this 94 to 96. All the questions are started kind of evaporating, it was percolating within my mind. Okay, what to look, what not to look, what is coming in my mind? But it was all there. So I'm showing you this fragments thing. Like this is a strange abstraction I got interested in the spine of an old copy. This is something I got totally confused sitting at my studio. This uh, texture of the carpet is exact the same carpet I had in my studio in Kalababa. So mm -hmm. you can see the photographic collages and drawing this and that. It's all surrounded by me. I was totally getting sandwiched out of all those concepts and contents and all. And this is something very strange uh, sequence created by sunlight and I captured through a camera. So I thought, okay, let me transform these uh, surprise into my collage. How it got? Well, I was not very happy though. I mean, I did it, but I was not very happy. So this is a kind of a mixed stage. I was uh, leaving Galavan Shantaniketan and uh, many unanswered questions. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned that I had got, got an interest with the uh, architecture and Shantaniketan. So this is something I was painting part and details of the architecture in Shantaniketan. So this is very primary stage uh, of my interest with architecture and abstraction and all. What in the similar architecture and abstraction you may find through my social media uh, pages. And this is also a very important image in my artistic journey. This is the member of uh, Tegur family uh, sitting in their veranda. And you can see they're looking at some two toys actually. So I was questioning myself ki what they're looking and why they're looking before I come to know the whole idea of Bengal school movement or nationalistic movement. What was the purification process, what they are looking from the tradition, so on. Again, I'm not going for that detail. That's a huge, heavy subject. But this is something I was very curious. Well, these are the artists. They made a fascinating painting and they are looking at the traditional art. As uh, one of you said that uh, I like uh, handicrafts. Well, this is also kind of a handicrafts. This is a folk toys from Bengal. They're looking at it, similar kind of toys. They're looking at it. So this is very, very important evidence to understand the background of any artist, okay, how they look at it, how they do their studies and all. Of course, these days we sit in front of the screen and those days it was not screen, they just got the physical toys and sitting everybody 
in the famous southern veranda in Jurashako House in Calcutta, the Tagore's residence. Of course, I did many shows with the works what I produced with the Tagore's archive and architecture because my idea always to bring back the research into a practical art practice. As one of you said that I like the urban sketches. Yes, this is also urban sketches. You can see this house I have photographed. I did research and of course I, I have created a huge large drawing on a wall. It's something eight feet by four feet high. There's a huge large drawing, this one, this mm -hmm. small photograph. And there's a whole show part of the show. So this was again another show I did in the Kolkata Victoria Memorial. So that's how things started. I mean, execution, uh, one side is my artwork, one side is my research process. So both the way I was trying to explore. And this is the photograph of the Tagore house, but I was mentioning, this is uh, number six, uh, Jorashaka house in Calcutta. And this is number five from where the Bengali school movement has started actually. And this house is no more, it doesn't exist anyway. Hmm. So that's very important photograph. And you can see how these family members like Gagonendranath, they have executed painting through their own houses. If you look at this image, this is from the, their house in Kolkata and look at this painting. It has a huge, I mean, intense resonance with each other. Because the house, if you move around, if you walk through, you could feel the Gagonendranath's painting. So this is again, I'm interested because how one site, one house is inspiring you. Let's say this during this lockdown, many of us, we started kind of realizing the entire hidden navigation of house, which we never realized actually. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so this is a kind of an idea they have done it that long back there was no lockdown of course uh, of course they had a self lockdown I must say the Obun and Gogon there's Obun and Nath and Gogon and Nath, they never travel much I mean maybe some Puri some Rachi some Darjeeling that's all they don't want to go anywhere actually they all the time sits at the southern veranda only mm. so that's how they made the fascinating painting of course they have written a very very important uh, text even and also here, it's me. Again, uh, how I am looking at this photograph. This is a tree house uh, of Tagore, which is again, don't exist. And I have created my own collage out of that. And this is again, kind of a lift uh, house. Uh, either it is a tree house or similar to that, mm. drawing by Tagore. Mm. So this is a kind of a, important dialogue how a photograph archival photograph is helping me to create a new dialogue through my own artwork because i haven't seen this house i haven't met any table i mean it's totally different time i'm passing through hmm. but how to carry forward that resource with me and that's how the history built up actually and also it goes i mean the next step hmm. even like the science, you make the bibliography, you mm. have the end notes, footnotes, every research paper, one has to have all these steps. Mm. So this is where kind of a visual steps, let's say. Mm. I mean, generally I call my work, that's the reason bibliography in progress, because it's not ended, <laughs> it's just in the progress. True. So, so, so uh, is there a good moment to stop and maybe ask questions and then we can come back to the rest of the presentation? I'll let you. Yeah, decide. maybe, maybe another two, three, then we can. Continue. And then we can. Okay, good, good. Okay, good. okay. So that's a institutional building, which again, I uh, was fascinated uh, with skylight and the air ventilation system. Uh, this is the air ventilation system. This was a kind of the exhibition hall, seminar hall and classroom all together. So one has to see how architecture they have developed there. Anyhow, I mean, these are all, yeah, you can see there. The class is happening at the same time, the exhibition is also happening. Mm. And this is a master's degree hostel. Uh, a lot of students, the final students, they live here for one year or two years. And this is also a very fascinating house. It's all very interesting experiments they have done from their 
tradition and the whole Indian roots. This is the inside of the hostel. Yes, still, I mean, I had the similar kind of a hostel room like this. We had this in the chair, table and all. Yeah, it's a very simple, but very, very elegant and very useful. Mm. And also there is a, uh, a construction uh, kind of a uh, small, it's very small, it, let's say some uh, 15 feet or some eight feet radius, that sort of a thing few people can sit inside, octagonal shape uh, structure. It's for the uh, tea, you know, evening or afternoon tea. During the tea, there is a uh, idea to exchange the education system, the knowledge. So that's how they built it. And of course, this is something from the, uh, the Basil uh, altar from Bengal and that's the Okakura's uh, memorial there. Hmm. So you see the how architectural resemblance goes and all, but I'm not going for that sort of a detail. And also, this is a very interesting Ranguli, uh, the floor decoration they do with the food grains and all. Hmm. And you can see how this uh, tradition, um, the transformation architecture happened. This is the Angkor Wat with the stone. This is Nandanikatan with the wood. Mm. This is my work. So I am inspired from that image and I made my watercolor. Mm. And you can see here, there is no logic for any watercolor. I mean, the British is pulling that is there, but uh, one may not follow that. And again, this image uh, kind of uh, struck me somewhere. Tagore was a true architect because you see, this is very rare appearance that Tagore is in a very unusual gesture. And you see the way he kept all the suitcase and tables and all. So these are certain images from archive, which is kind of a very, very inspiring for me. And that sparks my whole journey. Well, uh, Dr. Ryan, we can have a discussion as you said. Yeah, and we can come back to both slides if there are any specific. Yes, uh, yes, so uh, yes. Maybe you can unshare and and let's yes. let's go ahead and see if there are any questions that people have. Please go ahead. I really liked the way you've uh, taken the wooden structure and made the collage of it into the one of the later ones, but. Uh, the original one, I got a very little glimpse of it, Angkor Wat on one side and the wooden, uh, that uh, I could uh, sort of relate to quite well, the collage that you have made. That is done in watercolor? Yeah. Okay. And later on, if you can show those two again together, it will be nice. <laughs> later on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is not necessarily related to the art uh, that you presented, which is beautiful. Uh, but it is, um, it's something that uh, uh, we talk about often in these, in these mentorship sessions um, where, where we try to identify what are some um, inflection points, what are major uh, or maybe seemingly minor um, events or realizations in your career, in the work that you have done. Um, can you tell us maybe two or three of such um, such moments in your career that, um, that either helped you change direction uh, in the way you were thinking, in the way you approached your art, uh, or perhaps in, in your own uh, words, if if you uh, if there was improvement, if there was something that you know, how would you describe that? So uh, really to understand your experience as an artist and how that journey has been. Well, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I have already shared uh, certain uh, uh, photographs and images, archival images, which is a kind of a very very important for my journey. I mean, that stopped me, that struck me, and of course, that inspired me. I mean, still that inspired, actually, like the Kumar Swami was instructing Nandalal, they are doing that uh, illustrated catalog, of course, and of course, the split level in the nature, the erosive land, mm, the Tagore uh, sitting on that uh, bench, uh, wooden bench, uh, is a very unusual gesture. I mean, I have seen something more than 300 Tagore's portrait all the time. He was official. 
this is something very unofficial, you know. So there are many actually, uh, I mean, uh, in a childhood, you don't remember why it is, but you remember what you have seen, how you were growing, like the dry leaves, that building, the box building, because in Jamshedpur, I have seen the uh, very, very high tech uh, modern township. Maybe uh, rest of the India, they never seen that how the Tata, they made that uh, beautiful township. So that's a kind of interesting geometry, which is embedded in my mind. And if you go to my Facebook page, again, you will see the, uh, the geometry in my painting that is all there. So that's journey goes back. See, these kind of articulation you can't do when you are a student, perhaps, because it's difficult to understand what exactly happening. As I said, Okay, these are four images, answered and unanswered. It's remained within my mind while I was leaving Shantaniketan. But those images are in my mind. So those things, again, if you put back into the jigsaw puzzle and you try to create the whole structure. So that's, again, I mean, my uh, interest with the archaeology. I mean, archaeologists, they do the research, they dig up, they don't get the actual, the whole structure most of the time. It's all broken in pieces and bits, but it is their work along with the historian to put them together and construct the whole shape. So that's also my idea to work on. That's how I always bring back all those bits and uh, pieces and bits and find out, okay, how to locate them, how to relate with my art practice, how to bring back it. Yeah. Thank you for that. And if I may just ask a follow up in the same vein, um, if you were to step back from all of the artistic uh, influences that you've had that you just uh, articulated for us, um, can you tell us about, uh, you know, the maybe situations, maybe the environment that you were in or uh, the cities? I mean, you mentioned Jamshedpur as a strong influence. Um, but are there other things in that have um, happened in your life uh, that also led to this these artistic influences? Yeah, that, that we will start now. I mean, I have done the Jamshedpur and Shantaniketan, and we will turn into the third phase in Delhi. So, yeah. should we go for yeah. or if you have yeah, any yeah, other question? Just one minute. Let, let, let's give an opportunity for others to ask any questions, please. Yes. Yeah. Unmute, unmute yourself and ask. In Zoom, you, you don't know whether people are not able to ask questions or they are not asking questions. <laughs> Technical or, or don't have questions. If you don't have a question, please, maybe you can say, I don't have a question. So that we know that you are listening or you're aware. They can ask anything, actually. <laughs> so I think I will ask, like, uh... So, so one thing I, I could relate to a lot of, like, I also like the urban spaces and capture those things and the sales I see uh, in your photographs also. So sometimes I copy from those photographs as well, those kind of photographs. So like, how do you go about learning? Uh, like uh, you don't have probably, uh, I don't have uh, something like a uh, way to learn uh, in a formal way. Like how do you go about learning informal way and still bring in your, like improve your art or the skills? Let me tell you one thing. When at least I went to art college in my generation, there are two reasons. One is the passion, the love for art. The second thing, uh, of course we need to do a job but in your time, in your generation, at least last 10 years the, or 15 years, perhaps, the whole scenario has changed. Now it's a big question, of the relevancy of art college and code structure of the art college, right? So you don't need to understand any typical skill. If you can make something that is your skill, if you're confident on something that is your skill, number one. Number two is learning. There are many ways to learn now. There's an endless loaded of knowledge now floating in the internet. Of course, one has to look what is right, what is wrong, which way one has to use. And now the third, the definition of art is also change. One has to find out what kind of art actually you're looking. There is animation, 
there is a conceptual art, there is a performance art, there is a art like you don't do anything, you just put some collective and name is yours. Like, like, as if you have done it. That is also happening. You make computer generated layout and you ask some traditional artist to paint it on large canvas and you sign in at the table. All sorts of arts are there in the market. So it's a very different multi-layer area now. The way we, I have learned at least, it's a very fixed, streamlined course structure. We used to uh, have a class for 15 days, 20 days for one subject, like portrait study, life study, or still life, composition, something is 15 days, one month sometimes, that's like that. But that's a different genre of the teaching and the course. Now it's a semester, it's a package. Now even art college, they follow the typical engineering college structure. The mm -hmm. semester, four years bachelor, two years master. And of course now, you have a YouTube. So let's say the typical British schooling watercolor. In my days, I have to learn some way from somebody, some senior or some, but now you don't need that actually. You don't need that because that's a very uh, calculative process, stipulated process. So the definition of skill now totally transformed in a different way. Skill means which you are confident. That's what I believe is very personal choice. Yeah. yeah. So, Raji, Raji has a question. Raji. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hello, sir. I have actually three interlinked questions uh, for you. So, my first question is: is uh, in your case, uh, was this art uh, was hereditary? Uh, second question is: uh, so, do you think? Uh, like, is there any age factor to uh, understand the art? Because perception of uh, looking at the art or to understand it will be different at different uh, ages. Uh, uh, and the third question is, uh, as an artist, uh, do you see uh, evolution in yourself? Like from the time when you actually started uh, understanding that uh, art and uh, till present, I mean to present. So do you uh, see evolution in yourself uh, or in your perception when you look at art? Well, let me start from your third question, the evolution. I mean, the way I have presented the whole image yeah. and explanation, you might have seen how I'm growing from my childhood till 94 to 96 during my bachelor's and master yes. before I come to Delhi. So that's your answer yeah. for the third question. The second question, uh, you, what uh, just age, remind age, me again? The second about question. age, age factor. I mean, is there age any factor. age? No, yeah. no, 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 not at all. Not at all. There is no age, no, nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. Only age, you, you might need uh, to get admission in art college. And after that, uh, if you want to apply for some scholarship, some uh, something other, you know, uh, then maybe your age factor, otherwise there is no age factor, nothing okay. can, one can do any time. The first uh, question was some heredity or heredity? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, nothing, nothing. It's not that <laughs> actually in, in my family, nobody was artist. Even when I quit my job, the government job, almost, I mean, uh, after one and a half year, I told my family that I left my job. And they asked, so how you are living in Delhi? I said, uh, it's a uh, freelance. And in my family, um, talking about 2003, 4 there is no word exists like a freelance. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, Samit, uh, 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 let me ask you one question, which will, uh, which you can transition to Delhi, uh, because I really want to hear about your Delhi story. So, one of the stories that you had told me was it was it a professorship at Jadhapur University or some very famous university that you had got admission? You had got. Um, no, you know, no, 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 no. I, I, I was teaching in uh, Air Force Balwarthi School in Delhi. That was my first job. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got into this DU Kalindi College. Yeah. And that's for two years I did. Then I left everything. Yeah. And so that, that, that my question was, you left uh, a, a like nine to five paid job and, you know, sort of secure financial life and all, but then you left that and went into sort of entrepreneur, what we would call entrepreneurship of artistry, right? And then you went to Delhi. So, so maybe you can answer what, what was that, that, that enabled you to do, take such a decision. And then maybe you can start telling us your Delhi story. 
No, nothing. See, when I was living in Shantiniketan, I had a fixed plan to come in Delhi and I will take a school job. That was a complete fixed plan for me because I was not interested for any other job. The school job, uh, I was interested, of course, not even in the residential school. It's in the city school, uh, eight to two job that I was very keen for because that will pay my bills in the city, in Delhi, city like Delhi. And uh, if I go to residential school and if I go to some other job, my mind will be totally occupied. I cannot think of my art. My first priority was to making my art. So I was very clear in that sense. And of course, I was very clear that before I cross 35, I should quit the job. <laughs> this is a bad calculation, but uh, yeah, I did it. I mean, my 34th birthday, I put my resignation letter. And uh, then somebody said, okay, okay, there is a job in Kalindi College at DU, is a photography department uh, you have to set up. So would you be interested? I said, oh, photography, teaching photography is very fascinating. Okay, let's do it. So again, I started, then I thought, no, I can't. Then of course, in uh, 2005, six, uh, one of my friends asked me to uh, come to Shantiniketan as a curator of Ravindra Mapan. But again, I said, no, I left everything. I am not interested. And uh, yesterday, the person was very close to me. He expired, uh, Mr. Shakti Shina, who was uh, the personal secretary of Atal Bihari Bajpi and also the director, ex director of Nehru Memorial. So, Shakti Babu was uh, kind of very keen to have me for President House Curator. But again, I said, no, no, I'm not interested for any job anyway. I'm fine with my work at all. So, yeah, it's just me. I wanted to live my life. That's it. Mm. I mean, morning when I woke up, uh, I want to think about art. I want to do my own studies, whatever I want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you, uh, Raji, do you have any other comment? We have your hand up, or is it just from previous time? Uh, it was uh, from previous. Time. I'll just do her hand. And so, yeah, um, uh, I know um, Suprama, you had, I don't know whether you had a question, but maybe you can ask it after the Delhi story. So, uh, Somebody can go back to the Delhi story first. I think she has done. Yeah, she's she's she'll ask later. She said she's All in right. Boston. She's in Boston. She's in working in the lab. All right. Okay. Okay. So I'm sharing again my screen, right? Yeah. I'm sharing my screen again. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes, yes. OK. So this is a kind of a Delhi I started leaking. And this image uh, I'm showing again, because uh, this has a very, very interesting layers. You can see there is a middle class structure, housings and all. There is a temple. There is a little bit of greeneries. And also, you can see the mountain. It's totally garbage mountain. It's not a real mountain. It's a garbage mountain with some workshop shapes and all. So this is a very different multi-layer gesture appearance of Delhi city. Mm. So that is the reason, actually, I'm showing this photo, because uh, uh, Delhi is not just a common place or golf link uh, or Prithi Raj Road. But this is also Delhi. So. And this city has a very, very important dynamics that it always questions you. Who are you and how you want to live? Where is your space? How you are defining your space? And you have a constant struggle with your breathing space in Delhi. And that keeps me alive for my work. Hmm. Sorry, why it is not moving? Uh, you so when I came to Delhi, of course, uh, the whole the Tagore and this and that of Shantaniket and resonance, it's all kind of a, in under shade or somewhere hiding. Of course, it was a new journey. And uh, I was totally confused what to do because uh, keeping chronology in visual language or developing visual language is not a very easy thing. So this is something I was practicing uh, while I was in Delhi there, the beginning, the early days, like 96, 97, 98, the small objects 
which I am surrounded in my little Barsati or whatever I can see, the matchboxes, the lampshades, so on. So that was the kind of thing I was walking on. And of course, I was looking at this side, even in Delhi. You can see the whole structure. These are two photographs where the bamboo structures are standing. And of course, the makeshift houses is the illegal occupied or something, Jubilees clusters. So this is also Delhi. And of course, it's not an exotic Delhi. It's a very practical Delhi. They are serving the city, actually. The people leave here. They are the one who's serving the city, the middle class, or lower middle class. It's not the rich who are serving the city. Mm. If these category people, they stop serving a uh, city, then the city will be collapsed one day, maybe. Mm. And also, I'm very much interested about one artist who walked on city in Detroit. That's Gordon Mata Clark. And of course, he died very early. He was working with this abandoned building, new building, uh, empty building, half constructed building, and he was cutting and making different shapes and all. And he was taking photograph, arranging performance, this and that. So that's the one artist, Gordon Mata Clark, again, very much inspiring for me. And looking at, I mean, he was a kind of a uh, visionary to relooking the urban scape. So that inspired me again to relook urban scape and architecture. And of course, this is the photograph one can make out. It's a shadow from the middle class houses. And this is something from my own Barsati where I was living in Delhi. And I find this is very weird and strange and fascinating shadows, which is kind of holding the city actually. These uh, jigsaw puzzles of this black and white creating the whole geometry of city. And that brought me uh, to bring out these multi-layer collages. You can see the noise, you can see the multi-layer, the abstraction, the impression of broken lock. Broken lock is a very, very important symbol of the insecurity. So those things are there appearing in my work. Mm. And of course, every Indian cities, they have history and the modern and contemporary all. So this is how it looks in Delhi, the history and modern architecture both. Mm. So it's all multi-layer development kind of started building within my mind, uh, which is transforming through photograph, drawing and collages and more. Mm. And this is also very, very important striking image and cityscape for me. This also I say it's landscape rather. And you see, this is a people, they're not the beggar actually. They do some kind of small job like pulling rickshaws, some carrying weights, uh, some shops, uh, distributing some stuffs and all that sort of a thing. And winter and summer, they get these blankets or whatever, these uh, uh, foam padding to sleep in the night. So they pay little rent for this. And one guy is there or a couple of guys are there, they give rent. They're not the bigger, they're not the thieves actually. But this is a very, very interesting economy. This is a very interesting area to look at the macrocosm of the city, how city moves actually. And that interests me in India, you know, this, this kind of a um, uh, uh, detail, I mean, I haven't seen anywhere in the world, actually, because I've traveled many places in the world, uh, of course, uh, um, and small places, even interior side in abroad, but uh, I haven't seen such a sparking image and incidents uh, like India. I mean, that is one reason I have always wanted to be in India and were interested to work in India. I mean, I never interested to settle somewhere outside of the India mm. because this country gives, gives me the whole resource of my work. And this is my photograph and you can see the collage here with my photograph. Mm. Of course, it's all urban scape and city. And this is uh, from Chami Mosque. Uh, we talk about uh, installation, uh, the belief and religious uh, concept. So you see how these uh, relics of Hajrat Muhammad is kind of a locking here. Look at the size of the lock and the number of locks. And also this is a Quran is like a whole installation actually in uh, our term, if you call it the installation, this is like that. The whole Quran is sitting here. And if someone comes to the Jami Mosque, they can take one Quran and they read it actually. So that's how it is there. Mm. And of course this is uh, from the old Delhi area see how the makeshift structures has grown up. 
and also this one. This has got very interesting old ancient motif effect. This is something British era motifs, the grills and all. Right. This uh, is complete painting. Yeah, yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous um, stuff here you're showing. We are on the top of the hour. So maybe maybe and you can summarize some of the main things and then maybe we can do another small set of question and answers. Yes, uh, yes. I'm just yeah, going okay. yeah. fast now because nothing much to say on this. It's just my work. Uh, the word I have already said. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, very abstract and... Yeah, you can see the I uh, city is a reflection over here. And of course, how people are using the spaces at all. Yeah. Amazing. Would you say majority of your work is, is collage, where it's a combination of different things? Yeah. And also slowly from architecture, the archaeology has involved. Again, you can say it's a study of the past. I, I was always interested. So archaeology has been incorporated mm. at some point with my work. So that's how mm. it is going on. Mm. Very nice. Very abstract though. <laughs> for for yeah, people who are uninitiated it. in, yeah, thank you. Uh, for people who are uh, uninitiated and ap appreciating art, maybe it's not easy to find find uh, appreciation in this space. So um, maybe maybe we can open it up for a few questions, and I've asked Shruti who, to do a quick uh, rapid fire round with you. But maybe after that, um, before that, maybe open it up for a few questions if there are any. Uh, So, Prama, do you have anything or was it just saying hi? Yeah, I just meant to say hi and thank you uh, for broadening our perspective, actually, because um, I, I get inspired by art. And uh, for me, it's um, I'm, I'm like a, a below a mature. <laughs> so this this all things inspire me and um, how to look at life and uh, an artist's perspective will yeah, it's it's very insightful. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So Prama also makes some really nice art <laughs> herself. Uh, yeah. I dabble with things. No, no. <laughs> yeah. So um. Yeah. So if 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 there are no questions, but one of the questions I had, so Samit, for you, just to reflect on this, maybe maybe we can con have deeper conversations later. Is this whole history of um, Bengal School of Art, which is where I started getting connected with you through Devashishda from Los Angeles, right? uh, and and how how the how so the Bengal School of Art in India in the early 1900s transformed art in India? Maybe a few few words on that would be historical perspective would be useful just for everyone to hear. Well, the, that, that's kind of a uh, term, we use it as a working term, the Bengali School of Art, but that's a whole nationalistic movement. It was not just a Bengali, but the entire India was involved with it. Of course, Abhinindranath was a kind of a leading person in that sense. And I think they are the one who started looking at the tradition in a new way and reinterpreting the tradition. That's very important because the British they never try to look at the tradition of India those days, except few people like Parsi Brown or E.B. Habel. I mean, that sort of a people, you know, it's not everyone who tried. So E.B. Habel was one of the key person who indulged Indian people. Okay, you have something more. So why you are interested for the British art or something else? You have something to look back. So why don't you look at it? So that's how it happened. So in that way, that was the major and the only one single largest art movement in India, and uh, which kind of uh, tried to relook for the whole idea of modernist approach in Indian art. Yeah. yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, so that that puts a perspective of how to look at that art in a different way, uh, and yeah. how modern art came to be in India. Yeah. So. Um, does anyone have any final questions? And otherwise, I'll ask Shruti to do the honors of one, Yeah, yeah. Just one question, Samita. Um, 
you know, they say that education spoils a child. Like creativity is uh, suppressed and you become conformist. If you go to a particular school of art and you, you know, you understand uh, other artists' work and uh, you sort of produce their work, uh, that sort of thing. Does, I, I feel perhaps only learning the technique is enough and uh, then doing your own art. If we get schooled in the art of uh, others, then is it easy to get, find your own voice or find, find your own art in that? Some people say Amrita Shergills that French influence is very strong. So uh, it was, uh, you know, it is leaning towards that. Well, uh, I'm trying to look in at your questions. Uh, I think, you see, the word you have used, the style or voice, that one has to create himself or herself. The school, art school or art college cannot do that. Maybe they can give some keyword or some points or some clue, but it's a constant struggle, as I mentioned. In Delhi, the city, it always questions you, who are you? What are you doing? What is your space? How you are having dialogue with your own space? So that's a very, very deep artistic thought. So that perhaps any artist school cannot teach, they cannot indulge such thing, no. I mean, at least not the semester system cannot do that. That's what my belief. I think uh, it is something very own meditation. They have to locate it actually where they place. You know. Thank you very much. You're not audible, Narin. Sorry, Shruti, take it over. Uh, I think she might have left. No, 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 sir. Hello, hello. Oh, yeah. Hello, sir. Hi, sir. Uh, we'll start with the rapid fire round. So we'd like to ask some quick questions. Uh, my questions. Okay, let's begin. Um, traditional art or modern art? What do you like the most? See, the tradition and modernism or modern art, it always goes together. Without tradition, modern, can, modern cannot stand. Um, so, so when are you most productive? Which part of the day you're most productive? Anytime. Anytime it could be productive. There's no fixed time. <laughs> of course, I'm very much morning person in that way, but uh, anytime it could be productive, yeah. Um, so, so what is your uh, hidden talent that people don't know? People have not discovered about you. I don't have anything hidden actually. I'm a good cook, I'm a foodie person, I'm a very good driver with the knowledge of history. Um, so these are all exposed actually. Many, many, many people, they know all this thing about me, yeah. Of course, I'm an extremely uh, naughty boy in that sense. You, you can't imagine uh, in my age, in 53, how naughty I am. Nobody would imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody would imagine or still what I do like a hostel days. Yeah. <laughs> Only a few people know. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you were not in arts, which profession you might have chosen as an alternative? Oh, maybe uh, as I mentioned, you cook or uh, the driver with a good knowledge of history. I really love it actually. The driving and uh, showing people with the different historical things and describing, yeah, love it, yeah. Um, so what advice would you like to give uh, to your younger self? Like, based on your experience, what advice would you like to give to your younger self? Oh, I'm afraid to give any advice to younger people because they are much more smart or smarter and knowledgeable than me. Always I have to learn from them. 
because this this uh, technology is uh, dominating though i am a very very tech savvy person but still i know the young brain they, they works very well with the technology and technology takes it over everywhere so now they don't need original primary research do just paraphrasing and it's end of everything <laughs> <laughs> Just paraphrasing and get a PhD. <laughs> no, no, no. I think young guys are very smart and knowledgeable than me. I mean, uh, always I'm interested to look at the younger mind, actually. So, yeah. So, so your younger self was smarter than you, indeed. <laughs> I really appreciate that actually. I, I'm saying it is a very positive way. I mean, we are not mm -hmm. much contrast in our student days or childhood days. I think this generation younger, I mean, I'm talking about the last 15 years, even the very, very smart and efficient actually. Yeah. Very good. Um so uh, what are you most proud of? I mean, what work of you you're very much proud till now? Um I mean, nothing, it can be in any any no, aspect. Nothing, nothing makes me proud in that sense. I, I don't believe on that word proud, actually, no. no. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, if you got an opportunity to teleport somewhere, which location what? it would be right now? Teleport what? to some place. No, I mean, I'm always interested to be in India and definitely I wanted to be in Delhi, so that's how it is. I had all my opportunities to stay many places in abroad and all. I'm not interested. No. As I mentioned already earlier, this is my resource. This is my food. So primary food. Yeah. OK, and uh, finally, would uh, like to ask you one last question. Um, how do you define happiness for yourself? Happiness, define happiness. Yeah, I mean, uh, you see, I'm very focused and confident uh, what I want in my life and what I want to do. So as long as uh, that's all happening, so I'm happy. That's it. Because uh, I'm very confined in that sense. I mean, uh, I live within my life. You know, the corona has taught many things. I think one should understand that thing. One should live their own life. They should not go as a parasite life. I think most of us, most of the people, they started living others' life. That's why the whole frustration, the disbalance in the psyche problem and all sort of things started actually. Even in uh, our art group and artist uh, uh, friends and all, they all many of them, the problem is there because they are not living their life. They are living with some other's life actually. So I don't do that. I'm very, very content and just focus. Okay, this is what I need to do. This is it is. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Shruti. And since that was the last question, I want to ask one question to Samita. Do you yeah. like to read? Do you like to read? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I just want to show you one book. It was oh. written by an architect. Okay. okay. It's written by an architect. It's about Kolkata. Yeah. yeah. And from the artistic perspective. So it's you something see, well, you might enjoy reading. See, this uh, J. Malik wrote, this is uh, full form is Jadulal Malik wrote, where, yes. where, where I lived one year, the hostel photograph I have shown you. The, yes. so that was the place where my hostel was there, Garment Art College Hostel. So Jadulal Malik Road is very familiar to me. I know that place. Next to our hostel building, the Jadulal Malik's house was there. The house is still there, actually. Yeah. In fact, so, uh, it's written by an architect who... Uh, uh, compares like how you are saying you know in photographs you make collage with the old and the new so she also does that with the old uh, uh, traditional uh, architecture and the modern uh, requirements of construction and also the juggies like you say the that kind of thing i don't know what is the term in uh, kolkata but uh, it's worth looking at. You might like it. It's sure, about... I will check it. Thank you so much for showing it because the Jadulal Malik Road is always uh, in my mind because uh, that's my first hostel in Jadulal Malik Road. And that's very, very interesting area. I mean, if you have 
in Kolkata, you must visit that area because I lived there one year and I uh, visited almost uh, every month Kolkata and I, I used to go there actually to photograph. That's the heart of the Kolkata actually. If you want to really enjoy Kolkata, that's the Kolkata. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think uh, you know time to thank you so much, Samit, for coming and, and you know uh, enlightening us about so much aspects of art and showing some of the art. I'm sure some of us, I'm me for sure, are going to dive a little bit deeper into the art that you are doing and, and the things that you've exposed us to. Thank you so much. And I'm going, you, to go and I'm going to ask everybody else to wait for a minute because I just uh, want to get feedback, immediate feedback on the, on the discussion. A network should last a lifetime. Let us help you create lasting professional relationships with our world-class mentors through the Biopatrika Industry Mentorship Program. A strategic guidance program unlike no other, full of expert interviews, industry internship opportunities, CV writing, inflection point analysis, life maps, and of course, the gateway to your dream career. For a limited time only, all our services are freely available for you as we truly want you to succeed. Thank you.